Let's tie a caddis larva. We'll start with a Tiemco 400T in a size 12. This is uni 17 knot thread in white. It only comes in white. <laughs> tie it in behind the eye, bring it all the way back deep into the bed. Now I'm going to take a couple pieces of emu. This is an emu in natural. I'm going to use it as a tail as well as the, I guess it would be gills or so. I'm not going to take a piece of medallion sheeting, about an eighth of an inch wide, cut a little taper in it to tie it in, and it's going to be my back. I like to differentiate the abdomen from the bottom of the bottom of the fly versus the top of the fly. I'm going to turn a little darker. I could just use marker, but I like using medallion sheeting. Now I've got a piece of larva lace, chartreuse, half round. Cut a little taper in it to tie it in. I'm stretching it prior to putting it onto the hook just so that it wraps really well. See, I cut that little taper. That's what I'm tying it in with. Now I've got an extra long or large pair of whip finishers. That's so I can get deep into the back of the hook. Now I'm going to take another bobbin of thread, once again the Uni 17 knot white, bring it up at the front end. I'm going to use that second bobbin to tie off my um, larva lace. Set that off to my bobbin holder. And I'm just going to wrap my larva lace. You can see I'm yanking on it pretty good. I want it to be pretty slim. I like using this hook because it has a natural S-curve in it. <laughs> It sets off the body of the fly as well as really defines the uh, head portion of the fly, wing case and thorax area. And so notice how I don't take the larva lace top to the front. It's because I like to leave a, that space there for my thorax area. So it still stays very, very slim. Once again, trim off my excess material and whip finish it out. Now I'm going to use that bobbin now. I'm going to pull that medallion sheeting up over the top and it's going to be the back of my abdomen. I think it adds something to the fly myself. Get a little picky here. Make sure that since I'm going to bother to do it, I want to do it right. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to wrap that second bobbin and pull my, my emu up to the front. And I'm right where the um, medallion sheeting comes halfway into the abdomen. That's where I want to try to, that's what my aim is to put my emu at as I wrap up through the, through the abdomen section. Looks pretty good. I'm 
trim off my excess medallion sheeting and then tie it off and trim. Now what I do is I wrap un one wrap underneath the emu just to push it up. Now I'm going to take that emu on both sides and wrap it through and come over the into the notch created by the larva lace. See how I'm keeping the uh, emu just on that edge? You don't even have to look. It kind of follows it for some reason. It follows it really well. So I get a dark top on the fly and the underbelly's a little bit lighter and it's in that chartreuse. If I notice anything on our aquatic insects, the top is always dark, darker than the bottom. Same thing with the fish. I just keep wrapping till I bring it all the way up to the front. Trim my access. Now I'm going to take a darker piece of medallion sheeting and I'm going to use it as my wing case. Cut a little taper in it, ties in clean. Now I've got a piece of red peacock. I just love this stuff. It's still got the iridescence of peacock but it's dyed red. Excuse the hands, they're a little rough. It's fishing season. <laughs> My hands get dried out pretty good. I'm not complaining, just stating the fact. <laughs> I just like the fish. I tie the fish. All right, take my medallion sheeting, pull it over the top, trap it up behind the eye, tie it off. So you get this wonderful S curve. You've got a top and bottom fly that's darker on the top than it is on the bottom. It's the right color, right size and form. This thing fishes pretty good. Trim it off. It'll touch up to hide the white thread. And drop a UV resin.
there with my light. It's good to go.